Previously, we noted that fault block mountains form in regions that have normal faults. Look again at the diagram and review this. When the hanging wall falls down relative to the foot wall, the resulting higher topography over here on the foot wall is called a fault block mountain. So fault block mountains are the result of normal faults, which are the result of tensional stress. Additionally, we learned that the Basin and Range province here is actually undergoing tensional stress, and as a result, there's a whole series of normal faults and fault block mountains in the Basin and Range province. The Basin and Range province butts up right up against the Sierras. Thus, the east side of the Sierras is a great example of a fault block mountain. Right here. There's a series of normal faults directly along the east side of the Sierras and into the Basin and Range province. Essentially, you can think about Nevada, the Nevada side as being the head wall moving down relative to the Sierras, or the foot wall. Indeed, have you ever noticed how the drive up into the Sierras from the west is a gradual slope up? And then when you get to the top and go down towards Reno, it's practically straight down. This is due to the normal faults in this region. Earlier in this lesson, we learned that the Sierras were a batholith, essentially the cooled and crystallized remains of ancient magma chambers from ancient volcanoes that have long since eroded away. And now we see that the east side of the Sierras is also a fault block mountain. In addition to fault block mountains, there are two other landforms that are commonly associated with normal faults. Grobbins are down faulted blocks that are bounded on both sides by normal faults. In each case, the head wall side of the fault has slipped down relative to the foot wall, creating a valley. Death Valley is a great example of a grobbin. And interestingly, the word graben comes from the word grave in German. Horsts, in contrast, are upfaulted blocks, essentially the foot walls, that are surrounded on both sides by normal faults, where the foot wall has slipped down, leaving the higher rock here in between. So fault block mountains, horses, and grabens are three different landforms associated with normal faults and tensional stress that causes those normal faults. Just as there are specific landforms associated with normal faults, so too there are specific landforms associated with strike-slip faults. In particular, we're going to look at three specific landforms, linear valleys, sag ponds, and offset streams. A linear valley is formed along a strike-slip fault because as the fault moves, basically rocks are crushed and eroded away. Because you have a linear valley, it's now at a lower elevation, and if it's a rainy climate, water might accumulate in those lower elevations. Sag ponds are ponds or lakes that form in the linear valleys as the water flows downhill. An offset stream is a stream that's been disp displaced laterally due to the horizontal movement along the fault. Study this diagram until you feel confident that you understand these three landforms. Next, identify two of those features in this picture along the San Andreas Fault. Hopefully you can see the linear valley here marked along the fault and also the offset stream. Let's look closer at the San Andreas Fault system. We mentioned previously that the San Andreas Fault marks a plate boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, and that the Pacific Plate is moving to the northwest relative to the North American Plate. And thus, the San Andreas Fault is an example of a right lateral strike-slip fault. 
And actually, it's not just the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault system includes many, many faults that all accommodate some of that motion of the Pacific Plate moving to the northwest relative to the North American Plate. So there's many, many different faults within the Bay Area and elsewhere in California that are all part of that system. The Calaveras Fault, the Hayward Fault, the Rogers Creek Fault, etc. And they're all right lateral strike slip faults. And all along this fault system, we can see examples of linear valleys, sag ponds, and offset streams. Indeed, the Hayward Fault goes right through Richmond, Berkeley, and, Hay and Oakland, and Hayward. And then when it goes through the Berkeley campus, it actually runs pretty much right under their stadium. And it also offsets a small creek on campus. So if you ever happen to be on the Berkeley campus and along Strawberry Creek, you can see an offset stream firsthand. Closer to home, the San Andreas Fault runs essentially right along Highway 280, right past our campus. That linear valley where 280 is is an example of a valley formed along a fault zone. And San Andreas Lake and Crystal Springs Reservoir are examples of sag ponds. Looking at an aerial view of San Francisco and the peninsula, we can see that the San Andreas Fault runs right through here. And we can clearly see both San Andreas Lake and Crystal Springs Reservoir, two sag ponds. Zooming out, we can trace that valley further as it goes up through Bolinas Bay and Tamales Bay right through here. Indeed, everything on the western side of Tamales Bay, up by Point Reyes, is on the other side of the fault and has actually been transported from further south up through the northwest. Notably, all the small red lines here on this diagram are faults, and they're all pretty much right lateral strike slip faults associated with the San Andreas Fault System. I've labeled the three, three of the most important faults um, in this system here in Northern California. Um, I've labeled basically the three that are most likely to produce the next very large earthquake. As noted previously, the Hayward Fault is especially noteworthy because it runs through a major metropolitan area in the East Bay. Let's take one last look at this aerial image of the entire peninsula. And just remember that the San Andreas Fault runs right through here and that San Andreas Lake and Crystal Springs Reservoir are essentially sag ponds. Notably, San Andreas Lake is the lake for which the fault is named, not the other way around. The fault was named after the lake. The lake was not named after the fault. Crystal Springs Reservoir here is actually a man-made reservoir, but it lies right along the linear valley in the sag pond area. Crystal Springs Reservoir is where we store our water here on the peninsula and all the water basically for San Francisco. In a few weeks, we'll talk about our water resources, but for now, I'll just introduce the concept that our water here that we store in Crystal Springs Reservoir and that we use in San Francisco and the peninsula is actually from all the way across the state in the area in and around Yosemite National Park. We actually take the water runoff from snow there and pipe it all the way across here to the peninsula for our use. Lastly, we mentioned that Highway 280 runs right along the San Andreas Fault. And in the East Bay, highways 580 and 880 run right along parts of the Hayward Fault. Can you foresee any problems with this if there were to be a major earthquake along the San Andreas or Hayward Faults? I encourage you to stop the video and make sure that you can answer these three learning check questions.